Why are we still here? Just to suffer. Every night, I can feel my- <gasps> Hey guys, PJ here and welcome to another devlog video for the game that I still don't have a proper name for. For those who are new, it's a sandbox action adventure RPG with survival elements set in a procedurally generated world. That's a very long way of saying it's basically Terraria in 3D. That's kind of the best way to describe what I'm going for to be honest. So before I go on, I first want to thank and welcome all of the new people who subscribed since my last video. In the past 22 days, the channel's sub count has literally doubled because of you. My powers have doubled since the last time we met Count. Seriously though, you guys are awesome, I appreciate it a lot. But now on with the video. Instead of working on one big feature the past few weeks, I decided to work on a bunch of smaller tasks this time. Starting out with implementing some of the last remaining engine features, particle emitters and ribbon emitters. After that, I worked on creating some basic one-handed melee attacks. I also used my engine's animation system to create some VFX for the first time. And finally, I worked on implementing the first parts of what is to become the main gameplay loop, gathering resources by mining ores and chopping down trees. So let's start off by taking a look at the new engine features. First up, particle emitters. Now everyone probably knows what particles are, it's basically a bunch of instant sprites or meshes that are emitted from some kind of volume, like a cone, a sphere or even a donut shape. They can be used to create a wide variety of effects, from explosions to blood spurts to fire and smoke, sparks, portals, you name it. Almost every visual effect uses particles in some way or another. The way it works is you can set an emission rate, which specifies how many particles are emitted per second. There's also a burst mode that emits a whole bunch of particles at once at a specified interval. Very useful for explosions. Then you have a whole bunch of attributes that you can customize such as color, size and velocities. All of these can vary over the lifetime of the particle. By specifying a color gradient for example, you can make the particles go from blue to yellow to red over the span of their life. You can add any number of velocities to the particles. There's linear, radial in or out, which either pushes the particles away from the emitter or sucks them towards it. Tangential velocity makes the particles orbit around the emitter and angular velocity makes the particles rotate. Those are the most important attributes. It's a a much more simple implementation than what you might find in an engine like Unity or Unreal, but it's fine for my needs for now. Another feature I added are ribbon emitters, or trails as Unity calls them I believe. I kept it really simple here, a ribbon emitter is just a line segment that captures its position every frame and then draws quads in between them. And then you can put a texture on top for an extra whoosh effect, and that's it really. Another small thing I added is the ability to trigger events during animations. Currently, I use this to turn the ribbon emitters on whenever the character swings his weapon, but it would also come in handy if I want to add some sound effects like footsteps that should play at specific points in an animation. So the reason I did particles and ribbons now was because I wanted to work on a basic melee attack next. And VFX are a big part of what makes combat feel nice in games, so I wanted to have access to that before I started. So the basic melee attack is made up of three different animations that combo into each other. Two slashes followed by a spinny AOE slash. I mentioned in a previous video that I wanted the combat in the game to feel fast paced and a bit arcade like, so I wanted the player to be able to move and even jump during those attacks, albeit at a slightly reduced speed. This does present some difficulties in the animation department though. Because in the game, your attacks are always aimed at the direction that the camera is facing. After all, when I add ranged weapons in later on, they will have to shoot where the crosshair is, that's why it's there. And having a separate aiming mechanic for ranged and melee feels kinda weird. So just blending the running animation and the swing animation wasn't gonna cut it. I needed to be able to strafe as well. After spending some time creating animations for that, it dawned on me that this wasn't gonna work. Even with the separate animations for strafing, my character was still sliding all over the place. So instead I figured I should transform the spine of the skeleton programmatically, applying a rotation to each of the bones in the spine up to the head bone so that the face and the upper body gradually turn towards the direction you're attacking in, while the legs are still running in the proper direction. After a moderate amount of attempts with interesting results, This is the worst day of my life. I managed to get it working. The last thing I added just this week is the first form of what could arguably be described as gameplay, mining ores and chopping down trees. Uh, truly riveting. 
The way you get resources from nodes is similar to Rust at the moment. You get a bit of resources for every swing, and then you get a bigger amount of resources on the last hit when the node is destroyed. As you can see, the tools that have a gathering efficiency of less than 100% can actually fail sometimes. It's possible that you'll get nothing when you swing at a tree, for example. Luckily, it's only the crude starting tools that are below 100%. Better tools can actually go above 100, and that will allow you to harvest extra items. The ore deposits are actually meant to spawn in caves and not randomly on the surface, but I haven't implemented cave generation yet, so for now it is what it is. And as always, everything I just showed also works in multiplayer, as you can see. So with that, I want to give a little update on where we are in the timeline of the project and what still needs to be done. My main goal for now is moving towards a playable vertical slice or demo as fast as possible. But for that, I need to finish all of the systems that are used in the core gameplay loop. What we still need at this point is the crafting system, the building system, an NPC spawning system so NPCs start appearing in the world. I'll also need to make a few NPCs of course and give them AI. Those are the necessary elements that still need to be done in order to have some kind of minimal core gameplay loop. But for a demo I would like to have at least one boss fight as well. And apart from that I'll have to be very picky about what I will and will not include because I'm kind of trying to get to the stage before I run out of money and that's definitely gonna be a challenge. I really want caves to be in the demo because that's where the voxel terrain will really shine. In a more developed version of the game I definitely want a digging mechanic where you can dig anywhere you want and terraform the terrain and stuff like that with a shovel, but I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to do that in time so that probably won't be in the demo. Also the ability system that I did a whole video on, that probably won't come fully into its own in this initial demo either. Making those abilities would just take a little bit too much time and I think at this point it would be wiser to invest that in the core systems instead. Then apart from that, there's a whole lot of polish that still needs to happen, like I need to overhaul the whole main menu, add settings menus and all those things that people expect. There's also just a lot of polish in general that still needs to happen, like adding sound effects, improving the VFX and all of that. There's some optimizations that I really have to do as well. So yeah, there's still a lot of work to do, but that's where we are right now. So that's it. Thank you guys very much for watching this video. Please consider liking if you enjoyed it. It pleases the algorithm gods. Also feel free to leave a comment or join the discord. I'm always eager to hear what you guys are saying and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye bye.